From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Donald Trump finally announces his abortion policy, which is to leave it to the states. Is that smart politics? Plus, Joe Biden rolls out yet one more student loan forgiveness plan, and this one could affect as many as 30 million borrowers. Will this one also lose in court as his last one did? Welcome. I'm Paul Gigo uh, with the Wall Street Journal Opinion Pages, and I'm here with two of my colleagues, Alicia Finley and Kim Strassel. And sorry, no, we're not talking about the eclipse today. We're going to skip that since everybody else is looking up into the sky and we have no particular expertise on uh, eclipses. At least I don't. Maybe Alicia does, but I don't. And while the uh, presidential election is still seven months away, it's already in high gear on the policy front as the two leading candidates set some important positions on Monday, that will play a big role in the presidential campaign. Let's first talk about Donald Trump. Was under pressure to lay out where he stands on abortion. Let's listen to the former president's announcement on Truth Social, his social media site, on Monday morning. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others. And that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country and vote. So important to vote. Well, this focus on the states is something of a surprise since uh, Trump had teased in recent weeks that he might endorse a national ban on abortion after 15 weeks. But instead, he will not now endorse a national ban and will leave it to the states to decide. That happens to be the position that Ron DeSantis, Florida governor, took in the primary campaign. Kim, is it smart politics? Well, I think it's at least consistent politics, finally, in that this is the way I read it. This is Donald Trump embracing a court decision that he has taken credit for. He has talked about how proud he is of the justices he put on the court and of the decision that they made to overturn Roe and return this issue to the states. So this is finally the president's sort of getting full on with Justice Alito's point that this is something that the state should be deciding. It might be messy at times, but this is the way to go. I think it's also an acknowledgement and a smart acknowledgement that this issue has dogged the GOP politically in elections because he has a statement in here I thought was notable. He said, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country, which is currently and very sadly in decline. This was him reminding Republicans that the Democrats have used this very effectively in the midterms and other special elections, that Republicans have had trouble with it as well with some initiatives on the ballot, and that they need to be better prepared this time. So I think there's still some questions unanswered. For instance, where does Donald Trump stand on this? I think he's already getting pushback from national pro-life groups and from some Republicans. But personally, I do think it's wise politics. Well, that point is precisely correct on where does Donald Trump stand on a state ban? It's one thing to say, I want the states to decide. But in the case of Ron DeSantis, who also had that view, he endorsed the six-week ban that Florida passed. Does Trump favor a six-week ban, a 15-week ban? Does he favor an eight-week ban? Does he favor a ban on viability or no ban at all? I mean, he's going to be pressed, I think, to come up with a position on that. And certainly Joe Biden is going to try to pressure him to come up with a position. I think, Alicia, nobody's better at dodging, taking a firm position than Donald Trump, I suppose. Do you think you'll be able to dodge that through November? Well, that's the question and whether he goes on offense with Democrats, because Democrats have come out and for a national, uh, essentially codifying Roe v. Wade by legislation and potentially a constitutional amendment. So he could turn the tables on Democrats here if they go after him. But you're right that he is pretty good at crafty at dodging these kind of questions. And he didn't have to during the Republican primary because he just simply refused to debate. And maybe we would have gotten a preview of his strategy had he debated. 
But I do think there are a lot of opportunities here, as I said, to go on the offense. Now that he has said, like, I believe that this should be uh, left to the states. Does Joe Biden believe in a law that allows abortion basically up to the day of birth? And to kind of push back right now, a lot of the polls, like the Wall Street Journal poll last week showed abortion is the one issue where Biden actually has a polling advantage over Trump on. And I think the voters generally trust Democrats more than Republicans on this issue. And part of that's just a messaging issue. And so I think Republicans and Trump especially need to kind of finesse this issue and say this goes down to the all the way down ballot, that this should be an issue left to the states and then press back against Democrats who want to nationalize it. A couple of questions are also here. One is uh, relate to Kim to your point that some of the uh, pro-life groups express some real disappointment. The Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America group said that they're deeply disappointed, quote unquote, at the president's position. They favor a 15-week ban. Most of the pro-life groups do favor some kind of national ban. Lindsey Graham, a senator from South Carolina who sponsored a national ban, said that he respectfully disagrees with the president on this. I guess the question politically on that front is, will this position by Donald Trump, as it plays out in the campaign, hurt Republican voter enthusiasm for Trump and maybe reduce turnout if people don't think abortion is really at stake in the election? Well, he's making a bet here that if the choice is between Donald Trump, who says, let the states decide, and that means states that, including those that are passing, in fact, some stricter bans, or Joe Biden and Democrats, who he painted in this speech as radical on this position, and who, as I think Alicia just pointed out, have refused to say exactly where they are. And in fact, you have many of them on the record, indeed, pushing for legislation at a national level that would essentially mandate or allow abortion all the way through nine months, that these pro-life groups and pro-life voters are going to go with Donald Trump. And by the way, that's a bet that has paid off for him before. I would note that Iowa is one of the states that has passed a six-week ban, one of the stricter in the countries that did not stop Donald Trump from winning there very decisively. I would also note that that statement you mentioned from Marjorie Dannenfelder, when you get to the end, yes, there is condemnation of Trump and disappointment that he didn't go for a, a national ban, but it ends by saying we're going to work tirelessly to defeat Joe Biden and other Democrats because of their position on essentially limitless abortion. So I think that's the political bet he's making. I think it's pretty strong. He's going to have to answer some more questions, I think, to reassure them. I mean, one obvious one is Florida itself has got an initiative coming up. It's his home state. How's he going to vote on that? On a referendum on the ballot. He didn't even answer that. I think his dodge in this particular statement was instead to talk about his embrace of IVF. But that is not a substitute for having a view on abortion himself. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have more on the politics of the Donald Trump position on abortion just out today when we come back. Welcome back. I'm Paul Gigo with The Wall Street Journal with Kim Strassel and Alicia Finley. And we were talking about the Donald Trump announcement of his abortion policy. And one of the reactions came from, not a surprise, President Biden, who came out quickly in response to Trump's true social statement and said, Trump is scrambling, that's the word he used, to dodge the issue after having worked to overturn Roe v. Wade. Biden wants to pin Trump down, I think, in the mind of voters as favoring a national ban. And the question is whether or not he'll be able to do that. And because of the point you made earlier, Alicia, that the polling shows that this issue is not only Biden's biggest winner vis-a-vis Trump, but it is also an issue on which Many voters, I think it's roughly a quarter, I think, in one of the polls I saw, said that this is a deal breaker for them. That is, if you're on the wrong side of this, they are not going to be able to vote for you. So what do you think Biden is going to do in reaction to this? Well, this actually reminds me of that Seinfeld episode when Elaine refused to date any guy who wasn't (laughs) pro-choice. I mean, Falfel, there was a really cute guy, but she just couldn't get over the fact that he was pro-life. And so, yes, there are some voters. And I think that Biden especially is trying to use this issue to galvanize 
um, young voters, young women who otherwise are fairly ambivalent about his presidency and don't really see a reason to go out and vote, and not just for the president, but also uh, down ballot races. And we've seen again and again in places like Virginia, Kansas, and other places that when presented with an all or nothing choice, that the people generally favor all over nothing. And so it really depends on whether Republicans and Trump, how they frame this to voters. Biden wants to go out there and say, I'm going to protect your rights. If the bill came to his desk, he would sign it. And I think Donald Trump really needs to push back and Republicans need to push back here. And they've been really bad about this. Like, it is never going to come to his desk. There's no way that there's going to be 60 votes in the Senate to pass a bill banning abortion. Even after 15 weeks. Even after 15 weeks. It's been over a century since Republicans had a filibuster-proof majority, and you can't do this by reconciliation. So unless you were to blow up the filibuster, which Democrats have threatened to do, but Republicans haven't, this would not get to the president's desk. The a couple of other implications here that are interesting. One is, I wonder what the impact of Trump's statement will be down ballot. Uh, Alicia alluded to this before, but for example, in Florida, where you have the uh, referendum that would essentially codify Roe v. Wade that's coming on the ballot in November, that would overturn the Florida six-week ban. Rick Scott, running for Senate in Florida, has endorsed the six-week ban, said he would sign it had he been governor. Now he's going to be caught between that six-week ban and Trump, who's saying, look, I don't like the six-week ban, and we'll see where Trump comes out. I think he'll come out opposed to it. Second thing is you're seeing Republicans elsewhere scramble to try to change their positions on this. One notable example is Eric Hovda, the likely Republican Senate candidate from Wisconsin, is a pretty clear run to get the nomination there, running against Tammy Baldwin, a Democratic incumbent this year. And he's now shifted his position on abortion. He was opposed to abortion, but now says he favors a woman's choice early in pregnancy without specifying how early. Oh, I think what you're seeing, Kim, is that the end of Roe v. Wade, which allowed people to take absolute positions on either side, is now forcing clarity from some candidates, particularly Republicans, where they have to say, oh, what do you specifically favor an abortion policy. Yeah. And by the way, no thanks to Donald Trump, or rather, he is forcing them to do that. I have to imagine there were a lot of Republicans who've been waiting, okay, what's Donald Trump going to say on abortion? And then he came out. And yes, he has settled that question for now about his views on a national abortion standard. But he's essentially, as you said, left it down ballot. Everybody else still just has to figure out where they stand. And this is where they've been for two years. That's been the lesson for two years is you really need to work it out. I think it's been made more complicated too, Paul, by shifting polls. And I was looking at one here. There was a Fox poll from March and they show broadly, not just a Fox poll, but other ones that again, you have about 35 percent of Americans who say abortion should always be allowed. You have about 39% of people who say it should never be allowed or be restricted, meaning there should be some date and there should be no exceptions except for in cases of rape and incest or saving the mother's life. Everyone else is in the middle, and even those numbers are a bit in the middle, that 39%, because where does that leave you? What number do you get to? And that's where I think It's really interesting. As this debate has raged, the number of weeks has changed what people are comfortable with. And so whereas if you went just even a year ago, a majority of people supported 15 weeks. If you come to now, a majority of people oppose 15 weeks. They think it's too restrictive, which is interesting. Now, it's a very narrow majority. But it says something about Democrats and their ability to pound on this issue. And it means that you might need to have some more Republicans that not only get clarity of their position, but acknowledge that this is a deeply unsettled electorate at the moment that themselves are still sifting through some of these questions, moral questions that come around this very thorny issue. Nearly all abortions that take place happen before 15 weeks. (laughs) Exactly, which is fascinating just in terms of that poll. (laughs) 